Hey everybody, welcome to Live From Beyond. My name is Kevin, I'm jamming tonight, and we will be diving back into Eternal Lies. This is the second part of our uh, Bangkok uh, adventure. Uh, we're calling it Gulf of Siam because it's not happening in Bangkok, it's ha happening in uh, the larger area of Siam. We'll get to that. Anyways, joining us tonight, we have a, uh, a full cast of intriguing and uh, lamentable characters. Uh, they are portrayed by the players. Uh, players, tell us uh, who you are and who you are playing. I guess I'll go first. Yeah. Um, my name is Kim, and I'm playing Nicholas Saliba, a criminal slash fixer slash knight of Malta. Hello. Uh, my name is Dave, and I am playing the character Jacob Rosbach, who is a clergyman and has, uh, as of last season, just gotten himself involved into this whole affair and is still trying to cope with the terrible truths that he has learned. Where are we going from that? Is it me? Yeah. I'm Aaron, and I'm playing Marcelin Babineau, um, who is a French uh, industrialist uh, who is an expat and has been living in Siam for, oh, 10, 15 years at this point. Um, his fortune is in railroad, uh, but there has been increasing amounts of conflict inside of the country in the last two or three years that have made it difficult to make any money and there is increasing conflict between uh, France and the ever-evolving government of Siam. So I'm a little bit over all that and starting to run out of money. And in my downtime, I'm a devotee of Golgoroth. Because he's a cool guy. Surprise! Son of a bitch. <laughs> Kill him. Lies, motherfucker. All right. Yeah, so, um, so Aaron, we will get you in to the group proper pretty quick, I think. Probably Find next some week. reason, uh, good or not, depending on... So you're standing over Marcelin's corpse. <laughs> <laughs> what is a man who builds trains doing on an island? Well, you're not on the island yet. We will get to that. We'll get to that. All right. What, you can't have trains on an island? Islands aren't allowed to have fucking trains? Well, he's, <laughs> he's a visionary. He's going to bring trains to the island. Someone explain that to the entire island of Manhattan, please. Whoa. Whew. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Alex, and I'm playing Damon Smoke. I'm not going to add the detective Damon Smoke part because I'm not sure how much of a detective Damon is anymore. He's been slowly or more recently very quickly losing his mind with all the events. And so he's just barely barely hanging on and trying to uh, see this thing through, which sort of has become his life, uh, his goal now. Uh, and so as I was... Oh, there it goes. What the, <laughs> what the hell? Is this what you guys have been doing with all the fucking money I gave you? You've been sitting around talking into the air like you're fucking witches or something? Jesus Christ, people, there's goddamn cultists out there to find, and I, Janet Winston Rogers, your benefactor, really need you to get on that. All right. Okay, cool. So, um, a couple things I'd like to do. I'm going to give a very, very brief overview of the campaign so far, just so everybody's on the same page. Um, and then I would, uh, I have a scene in mind that I'd like to play out. Maybe it's going to be a little bit of a retcon, but uh, we're, we're, it's, it's going to work out great. So, um, just in the broad strokes, you guys are the investigators. You've been investigating the cult uh, devoted to who you now know is, in truth, the god Yagolanak. Uh, Yagolanak is uh, also uh, is uh, a, sort of a, a god of, of masks. He, he pretends to be, he's called the liar from beyond. He pretends to be other gods, or he keeps his true identity secret, even from those he worships. But um, a few have managed to figure it out. Most of them, however, think they're worshipping uh, either... Galathotep or Golgoroth or whoever. Anyways, you uh, he uh, his 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 shtick is is nectar. He's trying to spread nectar around the world, or his followers are, uh, for some nefarious purpose. You know, enslavement of humanity or worse. Uh, really, enslavement of, of humanity is like a best case scenario. You think? Uh, anyways, you've been traveling around the world. 
uh, destroying or incapacitating uh, nodes of the cult as you go. And uh, you have arrived here in Bangkok. Uh, you destroyed a, a, a mouth, which is what uh, Golgoroth sort of uses to exude this nectar, which is a, a narcotic, among other things. Uh, anyways, uh, the head of the cult in this area you think was not at the uh, the particular location where you were. Uh, you think her name. You think uh, that she is at an island nearby named Kokruk. Uh, I am not sure if you figured out her name, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. You found a bunch of letters named uh, signed SS, and you I think you eventually found out that name was Sabatri Sirakan. Anyways, you're traveling to Kokruk uh, on a lead that JWR or Janet Winston Rogers was able to find, and. Uh, I think that brings us up to speed. Uh, unless we have any pertinent questions or anything I left out that was uh, that's major. So JWR finds like one lead, and now she's the hot shit. <laughs> she's always guys. been the hot shit. She just <laughs> Gus like, died decided in another bring dimension. Her hot shit lead over here, and you just waltz in, in with game. like your like ticket to some island, and now you're in charge. You guys have been living on some ridiculous budget of like five hundred dollars each a week for the last like four years that it's taken you to travel around the world and like get half sure of like killed. Got a whole bunch of our own money. What I'm about like, where's Gus? So. Gus's hazard pay. Uh, <laughs> Gus's hazard pay is like in his bank account. The problem is that he blew a bunch of it on gambling debts. So like, what? All right. Okay. What? So. uh... <laughs> Moving a little along a little bit, so um, uh, we have we have two items sort of uh, of business to take care of. Um, the the bones of of the beginning of this adventure are going to be that you guys have uh, have have landed. Uh, you've taken a boat um, from Bangkok south uh, across the Gulf of Siam to a village called uh, Pattaya, uh, P A T T A Y A. Uh, it's a small fishing village. Um, it's also the largest settlement probably within, uh, you know, at least 500 miles in any direction. Um, wow. But, um, so, yeah, it, it is it is a center of sorts, but uh, anyways, it's, it's not very large. We're like 500 miles from, from Bangkok, at least? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, about that. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's... No I wonder mean, it took us like four months to get here. It'll take 500 miles to, or uh, four months to travel 500 miles by boat. I don't know, man. Okay. Uh, maybe, all right. I, I don't actually know the distance. Uh, maybe it's less than 500 miles. I can try to figure it out, but. I don't uh, think it's actually been four months since we played, so whatever. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. okay. Um, anyways. I imagine we've been um, at sea for like two days if we've gone 500 miles. Well, it's, it's, the, uh, it's, it's the Gulf of Siam. It's not like outrageously large. Uh, I I got you. I just I can try to figure out what the uh, it's around 500 miles long completely the entire Gulf. Um, yeah. So I mean, oh, so uh, Pattaya is actually not that small, uh, 1935, but it's it's not very large either. It's it's across the Gulf basically, uh, down at the the Horn of uh, whatever. Anyways, not so important. Um, what I'd like to revisit is uh, I, I don't think we I think we gave short shrift to um, to to Dave's character's uh, uh, backstory. So I, I want to have a scene, um, and I figure this is relevant. But um, Jacob, uh, before you leave, I think I think you you would have the piece, or the the sense of mind to um, to pay a visit to your daughter uh, before you know leaving town, uh, especially as she is. Uh, uh, you know, not well. Yeah, nobody, uh, nobody decided to ask uh, what's his face about the about the cure. Uh, that dude they met in the the basement there. Right. So, um, so I will, uh, I will start to set the scene here, and then uh, Jacob, I want you to to finish off the uh, the description, and we will we will launch into uh, a a, sh a short uh, interlude about uh, Jacob's past here. Uh, Okay, less, less than a hundred miles. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. Miles was a was a, was a, a gross just, exaggeration. Just pointing it out. Okay, no, fine, good. We've been so, going in uh, circle for months. Um, uh, about a hundred miles as the crow uh, swims. Okay, so um, 
So, Jacob, um, you've come back to your apartment, uh, you know, perhaps knowing more than you did when you when you last left, but um, a, a changed man for sure. Uh, you're not sure you're better off for the knowledge you've gained. Uh, and uh, you're not, you know, the... Uh, the goal that you once had to to free your daughter of this sickness is 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 shift is shifting back out of your mind. You know, it's 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 like in the back, but it's it's not. It doesn't seem in something you can reach anymore. It may be the dragging force, but it's you know yeah, a vestigial limb at at best. Um, so describe your apartment to me, um, and uh, and who's with you. Um. <clears throat> there, there wouldn't uh, no nobody with me. Uh, it's a very basic uh, flat uh, with basically two bedrooms um, and uh, a small kitchen and and central kind of uh, dining room, living room. Sure. Uh, one one room being mine. Another one which is uh, you know completely shut and. Uh, Looks like uh, the door has taken a bit of a beating, mm -hmm. and, and there's a very large uh, padlock on the outside of the door. Sure. Right. So, um, so as you as you like come to the front door, you can see your neighbor's like apartment door uh, swing open, and uh, she she's she's a Thai woman. She comes out and she says. Where have you been? Your daughter's starving. I had to give her food. I had uh, one of the people in my... Uh, I had arranged for one of the people in my... What, my, my clergy to... to prison her food. What happened, uh, to, what happened to, to Tran? She says, uh, they did not come in many days. Uh, strange noises coming from your apartment. I will take a look right now. All right. Um, she says, uh, you must do something. I call police. Please, go back Killer. inside. I will handle this. Killer. <laughs> All right. So um, you, uh, you opened up the door to your apartment, and um, you, can, you can see that, like, uh, clearly someone's been inside. Uh, it's, uh, it's a mess, but... Um, that's pretty much the way you left it. Uh, there's, you know, the sink is piled high with, with dirty dishes. Um, there is, a, you're, you know, you have a small desk which is which is piled with with tomes, um, uh, of of things that you used to consider, you know, outrageous, uh, you know, uh, uh, but but now you know are like, you know, the the the, the silliest of of of, of right? So that these are like occult things, but like. They don't hold a candle to what you've seen, which was like, you know, the real deal. Um, it feels it feels quaint and like you know, this this is a place that uh, you know you you can almost laugh at your at your previous self at how naive you were. Yeah. So, what do you what do you do? Um. I'll go and uh, go to the door with the padlock and uh, unlock it mm -hmm. and go inside. Okay, so you, as you open the door, um, you can see uh, that there's... So, so the bed on the far wall has been, like, flipped up on its side. Um, there's, like, a bookcase been knocked, has been knocked over into the center of the room. Um, the uh, sort of... Uh, Ropes that you use to, to to tie your your daughter down in her in her fits have, have all been torn, um, and you can see a, a, a frail looking figure sort of like uh, uh, sitting against against the closet door, um, and she like sort of weakly uh, raises her head as you as you enter. Annabelle, it is me, your father. How how are are you? Are you are you okay right now? So um, she, she, as she looks up and you you can see her eyes are like tinged yellow, and she says, "Father, is it is it you?" 
I'll go over to her and 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 crouch down next to her and and kind of uh, hold her and and say, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, darling, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm here. She says, I've I've had such terrible dreams since you left. You're oh, don't pay them any mind. You're not a dream, are you? No, I'm real. I'm here. You need to eat. Why why haven't you been eating? She says, um, well, I've I have i am so glad I'm so glad you've come back. I've I have much to tell you. There have there have been many visitors since you left. Who? Who's come? It should have just been Tran, and I found that the lady next door has come as well. She says, um, uh, they didn't give me their names, but they, they left a great many messages for you. I, I'm afraid I can't recall them just now. But you should hit her. That's really useless. <laughs> Darling, those must have just been the bad dreams you spoke of. I'm, I'm sure there was nobody else here except for... She says, for, no, there, were, there were several men, men cloaked in the tall dark of night. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That that was. They were. They were just nightmares. Don't. Don't worry. She says. Uh. No. No. They. They gave me. They gave me this. And she like um moves her feet. And there's like a like several like um strange strange symbols like scratched into the floor. Jacob looks at them, and doesn't doesn't really recognize them. Um. And it just says, "You must have just made these yourself uh, w from while you were dreaming. It, it's nothing. Don't don't worry yourself about this." Um, she says, "So so you're not mad?" Oh, of course not. Of course not, honey. If she weren't sick, you'd be pretty pissed about your floors, though, right? Uh, Do you know how long it takes to, to get that out of hard wood? Are you you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> this resale of the place on the value on this yeah. place is fucking plummeting. Um, she says, "She says I, I'm so glad you're not mad. I, I was worried you'd you'd be upset." Um, and she like so she raises her head, and um, along her collarbone, you can see what appears to be the beginnings of a of a tightly of, of sort of a, a very closed but long unmistakable mouth. I'm out. <laughs> like, we're leaving him. Like, uh, when you say mouth, I mean, like, like a scar in the shape of a mouth, or like, you know, one time. I don't think that's what he means. One time you probably would have believed that, but you've seen too much now. Got Alex, your mom is watching. What? Um, Jacob sees that and. Just kind of slowly, you know, starts starts weeping, um, knowing really that everything, you know, seems to be lost, and and really there's there's almost no hope, um, and uh, and come, then, Dave. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> come come now, darling. Let's let's get you something to eat. Uh, I'm I'm still working on on finding a cure. I, I'll I'll get you better. I'm sure of it. Um. She says, "Of course, of course." Uh, um. And um. Yeah, she's. <laughs> uh, so she uh, she sort of she sort of rises, and as she does, um, you can see that there is uh, something jagged in her hand. It, it it looks like a like a shard of glass. Did she do the mouth? Is she gonna kill you? Okay, Shane, I'm sorry. Was the mouth self-created with the glass, or is it like the uh, not unclear? Unclear. Okay. So it, it it appears like a long, like jagged, um, uh, not jagged, but like almost like a scar, except that you can see between the separations of the skin there are like, you know, clearly white, uh, almost pearly uh, growths. And like I said, should you had you had you not experienced what you had, you might have believed that this was uh, this was just a scar. But you've seen too much. 
Jacob sees the piece of glass in her hand and and to, uh, Dar darling, give me your hand. What what's this? What do you, what do you have there? And so she kind of like hand. moves her moves her arm back behind her as you as you reach for it, and she says, "It's nothing." Give it here. Show me your hand. Um, she like she like pulls away from you again. I reach for her hand. Okay. Um, why don't you roll a new character? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna wrestle your child? So yeah. So I'm gonna. I think the most appropriate ro role here is scuffling. If scuffling. You right. I mean, not that child. you are gonna like punch her in the face, but like scuffling in like as a as a, a jagged shard of glass. You know. S s you know. Whips out towards your throat. What do you do? I don't take no mess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. And uh, okay, how do, how do I even roll in this game again? So it's a, it, you roll d six, and then you uh, you can use up as many points as you want, uh, as as you have really. Gotcha. And you're trying to use almost always. You're trying to get above a four. Am I doing this in roll d twenty or? Although you should not roll a d20. Oh, so you roll 20. Get in there. Okay. Let's go roll. A belt, Dave. We don't mess around with that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So you, um, so she, she like whips out this shard of glass, like, um, and you, and you like step back, um, uh, so here's a, here's a, maybe an odd question. What is Jacob's uh, hair like? Does he have long hair or a beard? No, short, short cropped hair. Uh, he has a beard though. Okay, yeah. So um, you you know you see like a couple fibers of your beard like you know uh, slowly float to the ground um, as she stands there like you know again like almost in exactly the same spot but like clearly uh, you know you were you were nearly just just murdered. How, what uh, what is she, does she show motion, Kev? No, no, she looks exactly the same. So, I think it rebellious at that age. Yeah, I just uh, sorry when you said like so. I just basically just step back in time to avoid. Yeah, you step back in time, but like you know, it's gonna you need to grow the beard out a little bit. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> um, Jacob. You know, r kind of rushes forward to to grab her arm and you know, kind of put her in like uh, a hug that like prevents her from like hurting him or her and like trying to get the glass out of her hand. Okay, sure. So, um, you know, your scuffling roll was so good that I'm gonna I'm gonna let that uh, let that ride here. Uh, so you rush forward and you just you know you you envelop her in this bear hug. You 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 managed to like uh, pull the glass out of her hand. Both her hand and your hand are are, are definitely bleeding, um, and she just begins to like cry. Uh, I, I, you know, as she as she rests her head against your chest, she's manipulating um, you. <laughs> it's um, she's not Kitty. It's <laughs> it's almost comforting. It's almost like things are back to normal, but. Um, but as as this as this hug continues and she and she continues continues to weep against your chest, there's just one little thing wrong, and that is that you um, you can hear some of the weeping coming from um, from from just a, just above her her collarbone. Don't like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it seems like she's beyond saving. You should probably just kill her and move on. So um, yeah, so I feel, like, I feel like I'm being driven to kill my daughter right now. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm not trying to drive you to do anything. Um, although I think there does need to be a resolution to this this scene, uh, but I I don't think I, I actually the break character for a second. I didn't wasn't pushing it towards you killing her. I I think there are other options. If you want to leave her with some some clergy members or whatever, I I think those are all things that you can do. Um, anyways, um, so. Oh, all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hugging her tight and just uh, say, uh, Annabelle, it'll, it'll be okay. I'll, I'll find a cure. I promise. I won't, I won't let you suffer much longer. I'll, I'll make sure that we beat this thing. She I'm says, going to, 
I'm going to continue looking for for the cure and uh, all right. I'm li- Sir. Oh, so she, so she like looks up at you and she says, "You're you're leaving again." Darling, I must find a cure. If I stay here, it will only end in blood. She says, what, what will happen to me? I will make sure there are people to take care of you. The people from the clergy. They'll come. They'll give you food. Um, she nods slowly. She says, oh, okay, Papa. Probably going to die a little I'll bit. I'll see you again soon, yeah. Annabelle. She nods uh, solemnly. And with that, I give the clergyman the order to kill her, and <laughs> <laughs> like the DM, like the DM wanted. Brilliant. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, good scene. So, um, that is uh, that is what you what you are remembering as uh, as the, the the boat that you're traveling on pulls pulls into the dock at uh, Pattaya. Uh, you can see um, uh, a, a village uh, beyond is. Um, uh, you know, is there? It's it's pretty it's pretty rustic. Uh, maybe maybe you're used to it since you're a missionary, but um, everybody else who's there you can see this is a this is sort of an out of the way place. Um, this is far from the more touristy areas of of um, Bangkok proper. And uh, yeah, uh, you guys have a few clues to um, to follow up on. Uh, there's the name. Uh, Savitri Sarakan. There's the name of the island, Kokruk Island. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, anything else you can you can dig up, Alex? I, I think those are the main two, but there might be more. Was it just SS we were coming here to see? I thought there was another. I thought this was more tied into what happened in Bangkok somehow. I don't think so. So uh, I think this is good a, a good a place as any. Um, as uh, so, let's, uh, let's 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 digress here for a second. The, the boat ride um, has I don't know how long does it take to about to go 100 miles in a boat. Let's say a day. Well, <laughs> I don't think we have any concept of sea travel in 1930. I have or... no idea. I'm going to say. I mean, 100 you know miles isn't that far. Like, I, I would say sure like a we got into like, a ding. like four, 46 hours like chugging along so slowly. All right, let's say let's be, let's say it's been a full 24 hours. You've had a chance to get to know some of the other um other other people in the boat. Um so uh let's see here. Let's say um fucking French my, weirdo over here won't talk stop yeah. talking about railroads. Let's say uh, Nicola. Um, it's uh, it's you. Uh, you met someone else from uh, you know from from the mainland uh, of Europe on the boat. Uh, why don't you set the scene for me for for when you first uh, started talking to uh, how you say Arsulin? Yeah. No, I'm okay. from Malta. That's not the mainland of Europe. Well, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> I'm not sure. But whatever. You're right about that. Yeah. You're right about that. Get out of here with your geography, Kim. <laughs> yeah, mean... geography was never your strong point. Strong suit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Nicholas is an idiot. So he's like, France? Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> France? Okay, cool. Um, but sure. You described the scene to me. And, uh, you know. Em- embellish whatever details you'd like. Uh, I haven't really described the boat, so it can be as big or as small as you uh, as you prefer. Sure. Yeah. No. We we were up on the top deck, uh, having a smoke, and um, I guess I uh, overhear um, the gentleman speaking French, which I I actually think I might speak French. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I I uh, I greet him with a. Bonjour, and uh, ask him what he's doing all the way out here. Uh, you know, it's always a problem when uh, you are trying to install rail in a new place because the the rail distances, the the size, how you say, um, the 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 uh, wooden pieces that hold apart the track. Uh, do you, what is word in in uh, in English? 
the, the ties, yeah, the ties, the real ties, uh, they are different sizes in each country. Um, and so you cannot pre-cut, which means that when you come to a new country, you must find an appropriate supply of timber in each place that you go. Uh, we have run out of timber for the line that I'm currently building, and I am going to examine uh, how you say a, a new source for my uh, timber. Kim, can you edit in the the more you know graphic to that part of the episode? I could, but I yeah, we'll 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 take care of it in post. <laughs> we'll do it live. Right. Um, right, yeah, uh, Nicola will kind of you like nods and follows along, but you can kind of tell that like he has no idea what you're talking about. I don't think that Mustalan can tell that. He assumes that you're like all the way there with him. And is very excited to have found a friend who also likes the details of, you know, railroad manufacture. Sure. I feel like we're really bonding here. So, uh, so, so, so Nick, they, they talked about things for a while, but um, there was a certain point when um, perhaps it was, uh, perhaps it was Nicholas Slip, perhaps it was Massillon's Slip, but um, one of them sort of hinted that uh, they, they, they had an interest in the occult. Uh, which uh, which sort of cemented the conversation, but but what was it? What was it that led to this uh, sort of unexpected so, turn of? In the conversation that the two of these guys are having. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, from railroad ties to oh yeah, you're also into the occult. Um... Speak of being railroaded, I'm a knight of Malta, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got it. And Kim wins the oh, session. There we go. <laughs> We're live from beyond. We'll see you next week. That's a walk-off. That's a walk-off. <laughs> uh, so, so the thing is that um, Nicola, right? Nicola was just pretty... It's still pretty recent that Nicola was sitting in that drawing room in Malta, and people were like, by the way, like evil demons and mouths and, and nectar and stuff, right? He's still like a little bit uh, shocked. So he's actually kind of um, he's like really sensitive to it, right? He's like he's on edge about all this stuff. Oh, okay. So um, he hears he hears uh, Marcelin say something that uh, to his like rusty French sounds uh, well, his rusty French slash his on edge mind. Is, sounds is the rusty like, French a sex move or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is, but only in the second edition. Oh, okay. Um, he he um he thinks that his new companion says something about nectar. So he's like, "What about nectar?" And then uh, Marcelin's like, "Oh, did you want some?" And he like reaches into his pocket <laughs> and has like a little vial. Um, I don't think I'm then, actually involved yeah. with one of the nectar cults. Listen, I don't know where you nectar. found it. <laughs> I got put on the spot, so that's what happened. All right. Um. Maybe this is maybe you're not involved with the nectar cults at all, but maybe like the extremely tired and overworked uh, railroad guys have been like passing around these vials of like something that's supposed to supposed to keep you up. So all right, so riding. let's let's say this. Let's say that um, this this vial is not actually nectar, but maybe Marcelin thinks that it is. He's heard of nectar or something obliquely, and uh, maybe uh, he's curious. But uh, the thing that he has is like a knockoff or something like that. Maybe. We can. That's a good. Uh... Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, like it's it's like kind of uh, late at night, and uh, Nicole's been like chain smoking cigarettes, and obviously he's like uh, on edge. And uh, Marcelin like reaches into his uh, coat pocket and, and produces something that kind of sort of looks like nectar. And uh, and Nick like 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 immediately steps back. He's like, no, no, I I I, I can't take that. I do you, do you know what it does? Well, yes, it keeps you up a little bit at night so that you can continue your work. It is very popular with some of the men working on the railroad. It is, from what I hear, the newest thing from Indochina. It also keeps you regular. You, you don't. You don't know the truth. That drug is evil. Uh, Masudan, like, takes a sip from his thing and is like, it has not caused any problems for me? You haven't seen what I've seen. 
that is uh, a definition of existence, no? Um, Fucking French philosopher. Nicola kind of like uh, panicking a little bit, um, kind of abruptly runs off to try to find Damon. Okay. Well, that was a very odd man. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, sure. Do you want to? Do you guys want to do a scene with Damon, or do you want to? What What do you think is appropriate? Uh, next I mean, time Nicola just kind of like I don't know, maybe bursts into Damon's room or wherever Damon is, and uh, and like says like um, you know tells him that there's a there's a a guy with some uh, nectar contact up on the top deck. Oh, good. Um, tell, tell the addicts that there's nectar around. Damon like slowly like turns his head towards you. His like eyes are like bloodshot, and he says, "He says, what? What? We don't we don't want a nectar contact." But he, yeah, he I like, know. What's at you? But it could be a lead. Another production source. Damon's like, of, co- of course, of course. Uh, you're, uh, you're right, Nicola. And he, uh, he stands up and, uh, like, he says, uh, "Lead the way, lead the way." So, um, so Dave, as as uh, as Nicola's standing there, and, and Damon stands up from the desk. There's something a little bit suspicious that, like, so what was what was Damon like working on? What was he looking at uh, at his at his desk in the? I, I guess it's a, a desk in the boat. A fucking lucky guy, but. Um, or his, you know, wherever he was, he was sitting. So, what, uh, the, what's the concerning thing? Oh, go ahead. The concerning thing would be that Damon was just sort of like staring at his notebook for probably the past forty-five minutes. Uh, not a single note was taken. Not a page was turned. It was more just kind of like just standing there, like, you know, like a, a couple of pages opened, but he's just like standing there, uh, sitting there, and like just looking at this desk. And when Nicola came in, he sort of uh, like. Uh, you know, woke Damon out of that stupor. Mm, okay, uh, cool. But that's the. Um, so yeah, so so we get up on deck and. Uh, so uh, as you as is Marcelin still there? Wait. Okay, so um, as as they get back up up back up on deck, um, you know, Damon takes you in for the first time. What does he see? What does Marcelin look like? Um, what's his what's his bearing? Uh, Marcelin is a rather slight man. Um, he's got close cropped um blonde hair he's got bluish eyes um and he's got kind of a a bit of a nervousness a little bit of energy to him um always seems to be moving around usually has a a cigarette hanging out of his mouth or um, a rolled up newspaper or something that he'll stop and read whenever he finds himself stuck with a moment and and nothing to do uh you know well dressed but not um newly dressed so you know tasteful clothes that have clearly been uh tailored but have seen some wear to them okay is that uh describing is that a description in line with the picture that so i put a picture in uh roll 20 but uh it might oh, not be appropriate no. okay. i've looked at the picture like once and it might match in some ways <laughs> okay well he does have a cigarette hanging out of his mouth i, I it matched from what i could tell so well, he is uh, french so <laughs> Sure, fair enough. Okay, yeah, so. Oops. So is he still holding, like, the vial or, like, you know, I, or I ask um, Nicola to, like, guide me to whoever he was talking yeah, about? Yeah, so I, as soon as we get up to the top deck, I, like, I, I point at him and, and says he, he he offered me some because he thought I was, um, I was tired. And then he just casually uh, uh, took some himself. I say this man casually took some nectar, and I like look. I look over at uh, Mars. How do you say your name, Marcelin? Marcelin. Marcelin. Right. Uh, so I I uh, I come I come up to him and I say, uh, 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 "Hello, sir." Ah, bonjour. Comment ça va? Damon kind of looks over at uh, at Nicola. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry, you don't speak French. Uh, how are you? Oh no, uh, no, uh, I, I'm I'm good. I'm fine. Um, my my friend here was telling me that um, you, uh, you 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 off 
how how do you feel? My friend said I... you took some substance, and I feel like it should have yeah. knocked Would you, you like out. some? Your your friend reacted very strangely to it, but I have not had any issues with it. Uh, none of the the workmen at the sites have seemed odd or uh, overly different than they were beforehand. Damon like flinches for like a second, as if you like swung at him when you like take it out. But he like carefully like reaches in and and he says, "Um, sure." And he like takes it from you and like sniffs it. Right. Is so, it... um, so Damon, as you smell it, um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't smell anything like the nectar that you know. You don't get that same rush. So even when you when you smell the different flavors of nectar, they might have smelled totally different, but when you smelled them, you you still knew what you were holding because of because of the way you know it it you know lit something up inside you. Right? There was some sort of physiological response that just always. Okay, I, um, I I I look over to Nicola and without like lowering my voice or anything, I just say like, "This isn't the mouth's production." Sure, and there is probably an opportunity for a spend here if you want. Oh yeah, if you want. Sure, I do. Um, it depends on what it is, I guess. Uh, well, you gotta tell me. Oh, to uh, to to with with the vial you're talking about. Yes. Let's see what kind of science. Since we're has. breaking back into uh, into trail. Yes, I'll yes, yes. Thank you. says to when you can spend. Uh, Damon's not much for sciences. Okay. So That's I think fun. he's just gonna go by his sense of smell, and uh, and very hesitantly like. Take like a drop of whatever this is on his like tongue. Um, is uh, is there uh, the ability from like my days as like a cop? Um, can I do a spend of something along the lines of? Um, try, I'm trying to see if I have like anything appropriate for it. Just locksmith a secret. I will. That's what, that's, that's the goal. <laughs> but it's, um, that's, that's what I'm saying though. <laughs> What about all those extra points that you just got? I, I what what right is a here? secret if not a lack of knowledge? I'm just gonna go. Exactly. Just gonna go, I'll hand I'll hand the vial back and like I like I don't know if you could use assess honesty another player, but like does does it look like this sure. guy's like legit just kind of saying like we, we absolutely just, you know, like stay up. No spend required. I think Marcelon is uh is pretty upfront right now. Pretty genuine. Okay, so I I like take a, you know, like a small smallest gulp of it. Um, there's n nothing nectar, no no kind of nectar-like reaction, right? Uh, no. Um, so I I uh, I give I I, I hand it back to. I mean, you, you you start to feel good, but it's not the same. Um, not that good. No, it's not. It's not the same uh, amorousness that you would experience from certain flavors of nectar. This is just okay. meth. <laughs> This is just liquefied crystal meth. Good <laughs> lord. So uh, it's, a cake, it's a gallon of PCP. I like I hand I hand it I hand it back to Marcelana and I look at Nicole. I'm like, this isn't this isn't the mouth production. I say uh So how do you yeah. Is this um a a rival drink producing company? <laughs> Damon Damon sort sort of like giggles to himself. Uh well, just kind of like a you know, like a smile and like a chuckle. And he says, um, "No, no, it's nothing like that." It's um... and I, then I'm now imagine kinda... internalized in like the 1990s with like a a hyperactive kids cola commercial for the the mouse company. <laughs> it's nectar <laughs> brought to you by the mouth. Find <laughs> some of your goal holes. <laughs> he just kind of trails off, and he says, "No, no, it's 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 worse than that." Ah, uh, perhaps you are speaking about the occult. <laughs> and, and, and and he looks at Nicola, and he's like, "What did you?" He's like, "What did you tell him?" Nicola is also a drink, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Wow. Sorry. Um, you look at, at Nicola and, and you do what? <laughs> and I say, like, what did you tell him? Because he says of the occult. But 
I didn't tell him anything. I told him that the, the, the nectar is dangerous. The perceptive Frenchman. Uh, I mean, there have always been rumors that um, the creators of nectar were somehow involved with the occult. It seemed rather silly to me. Um, certainly, I saw no such results as I would expect. And I, I have some knowledge of those matters myself. Um, and now you are saying that there is another kind of nectar that is associated with some mysterious mouth? Uh, seemed like it would put one and one together. I, uh, I take a... I, I, like, carefully, carefully observe uh, Marcelin, and I say, uh, a very good uh, observation indeed. Um, yeah, just... Well, Golgoroth teaches us to beware of the truth and the lie. David just starts crying right there. Like, <laughs> just not, no. <laughs> yeah. What Kim, what Kim is saying. Uh, so, no, Damon just sort of, like, looks looks at Nicole, and he's like, and he's like, Golgoroth, and he, like, begins to, he's like, Golgoroth, he, like, whispers, and he begins to, like, usher um, Marcelin. He's like, how about, how about we go uh, grab one of the private tables over there as he, like, looks around to see who else might have, like, overheard the, the conversation. Sure, why yeah, not? So you look around, um, there's a couple, it's it's pretty late at night, there's a couple other like travelers on the boat, but uh, none of them seem to be paying attention to you. Uh, I say, uh, I, I like, uh, you know, uh, said, what, do, what do you know about Golgoroth, Marcelin? He is the god to whom I have devoted uh, the last five years of my life. Um, it is, I don't want to sound insensitive, but extraordinarily boring living in Siam. Um, and I found myself in need of something more exciting, something that had uh, meaning. And um, Golgoroth offered more meaning than the uh, bloated crops of the Catholic Church could do. So, uh, that's so what he says, I Jacob might take, a, take offense to that. We'll see how that plays well, out. <laughs> Jacob is not here, so... Oh, sure, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, uh, so, so Damon, t uh, he's like, maybe, maybe, you know, and he, um, goes to, uh, into his like pocket. He like pulls out a, um, like a little notebook. Hold on, I'm trying to find my notes. Uh, uh, and, and he like slides him like this, um, uh, like a little note that says, uh, it's, uh uh, that mentions it's just like a bunch of jumbles, but it's just like Golgoroth and Gox and like Goxmal, Gox yeah, and just like he's like he's like he's like do, do you know do you know where this is do, do you know when this is and just he's just kind of like frantically like looking between you and uh... so so Marcelon, um, I, there's an opportunity for a spend here if you want uh, for you. mythos uh, mythos or, or a cult. cult either one. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, let's see. I have both. Um, let's do an occult spend. Sure. So um, I will say. Uh, uh, yeah. So you you notice among the notes that you as as you just you you run your eyes over them quickly. Uh, a, a, a mention to a book you've you've uh, become acquainted with called uh, "Fishing the River of Stars." Ah, you, I see here Fishing the River of Stars. This is uh, a book of which I have some passing acquaintance. Uh, uh, Damon kind of like holds on to the, to the note where like he has the list of books and he was like, um, maybe, was like, did, I, did I take it from Harvey? Did I, did I take it from Fritz? And he like, he's kind of like rubbing his temples and he's like, I have to check my luggage. Um, you said, Fishing, fishing the river. Yes, that's Harvey's book, isn't it? Didn't he get that from uh, Tremel's house? That's what I'm saying. Did I take it from Harvey? <laughs> oh yeah, you can have the book if you want. That's that's Chris totally is, good. Chris is the one who had read it back when. Yeah, I, I figure you guys well, have like a, a stack okay. of books in the luggage, you know, uh, a suitcase somewhere. Yeah. But like reading and analyzing books isn't like. Damon's specialty, so he kind of like has a bunch of them. You know. Sure. So, of course. 
So he's oh, like yeah. divine. No good at reading. What is this guy? So I, I I invite uh Muscleon back to my cabin, um for a uh, late night beverage yes. and a read through the uh fishing the river of stars. Yeah, <laughs> what they call it. Yeah, uh, call, was call, coming. A cult and chill. Uh, a cult and chill is cult and chill. A cult yeah. and chill. <laughs> <laughs> let's go uh let's go fish the river of stars back in my room if you know what i mean <laughs> so so on the way I, I mean if i mean marcelon if marcelon accepts on the way down uh we? the only question that like keeps tumbling around damon's mind and which he asks is how, how does one how does one Hit stumble on into Dolgara? How does one fish a river of stars? Well, I I certainly would not say that I've ever tumbled into Golgoroth. He's a god. One does not meet with gods or does not oh. expect to on a regular basis. Um, but you ever been to you Mexico? Know? <laughs> no. Why would I go to Mexico? Are there railroads there? I doubt. Not it. not yet. So come on over. Oh, well. You make a compelling argument. Let's leave this island of which you speak and go to Mexico. All right, so I uh, I produce the once we get to the and, and on the way back I like knock on um, Jacobs and JWRs and uh, I guess Nicole is with us. Yeah, um, I like knock on their doors. I just say like you know meeting in Damon's cabin. Sure. Uh, oh my, you are quite a little cat- coterie, are we not? Uh, yeah, I like. Uh, Sliced meat and cheese too, charcuterie, yes. right? That's what. That's what yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. You got it. A friend. Yeah, that's A plus. <laughs> so, so, Damon. Uh, so once we get there, I like, uh, I you know inform everybody else. I was like, I think this guy, I think this guy might know some, might know some things. And very eagerly, Damon just hands you the book, and he's like, like his hands almost like shaking. He's like. Uh, t- uh, take a look. See, see what you can, uh, see what you can decipher. So I don't know how you want the next fourteen hours to go, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know I'm totally fine with uh, slowly telling or or f- telling Marcelino some of the adventures that uh, if you know as much as he's willing to. I'll, I'll gauge his uh, belief and interest in that and tell him as much as he wants to know sort of thing. I mean, I don't think that Marcelon will believe everything that you say, but he certainly has more of an open mind than your average schmuck, and uh, he likes hearing about stories, even if he doesn't believe them. Oh, of uh, course. No, I show you, like, the, the picture of the um, the lady with the two mouths, or with the mouths for eyes or whatever the heck she was can we get a any chance we can get a, that picture on internal light no whatever which picture Sorry. the oh. one with the lady the singer oh yeah sure uh nope nope nope. <laughs> nope 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 uh let me let me drag it out here masulan looks appropriately horrified <laughs> you haven't oh, seen it yet you can't be appropriately yeah. horrified so excited! I haven't seen this picture in like two years. Oh, sorry. Oh, there's so many pictures. I'm I know. That's, what I was that's okay. So, yeah, that's a good one. Hi. That's what you're into, uh, Alex. I'm I'm saving for later. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you know, I like I just and it's just like this, you, you know, picture, to, there you picture after picture. At some point, Damon gets a little carried away and like starts showing you like. <laughs> The different pictures, you know, like talking, just like kind of uh, some of the things that he said don't like link up very well, um, but you know, he sort of uh, he sort of kind of just pu- pushes through it anyway. But of course, but of course. And so, so, so this, so this river um, is like, t- what do you, what do you think, what do you think about this book? Um, you think we can? You think we can get? To, I, I just ask Marcelin directly. I'm like, do you think we get to? Um, I don't remember her name, Kevin. Sir. Uh, Savitri Sirakan. Do you think we get to Savitri Sirakan? And like, I I know Alex knows that 
Mar- we, it was never mentioned to Marcelon, but like the thoughts just kind of come out in like a word vomit, and he like looks at Marcelon with like hope in his eyes. I don't know who that is, and as far as I can tell, she's not mentioned in this book. Um, nor have I ever heard of her with reference to the Volgorov. Uh, so what's what's Janet's take on this? Like, like this exchange has been going on for some time between Marcelin and Damon, and um, I, I, I imagine Janet has been kind of kind of entertaining it for a bit. But like, it was. I mean, I didn't really want to interrupt the flow. Sure. Uh, I was thinking about interjecting, but but only originally to say that like when Janet's summoned to the meeting, she introduces herself incredibly politely to Marcelin and and in like perfect French. Okay. Uh, as, you know, being being well, like, perfect, but like maybe not perfect enough. For well, like not accented, just like, like very well learned. Okay, I mean, right? Like, she's like an aristocrat. I think she knows. Sure, like any good Frenchman, Marcelin pretends not to be under- able to understand you at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is that? Uh, she, what language she, is that? <laughs> she introduces herself very politely to you. Um, but you can tell she's very, like, reserved. Like, like she wants to... She kind of wants to know what the fuck you're doing there. Um, and as this exchange goes on, um, she she turns to... Uh, uh, God damn it, what's your name? Jacob. Hmm. And she says... Um, she says, uh, uh, "Mr. Rusbatch, I was, uh, I was more than willing to uh, to entertain your involvement here due to your daughter, but I'm I'm not so sure that I'm comfortable with this uh, this cavalier attitude towards adding new party members." I'm not sure if he is a party member yet, but we must try to learn all that we can, I suppose, and we might as well hear what he has to say on the matter. I say, uh, I say, oh, well, very, very well. Uh, it, it never hurts to listen, I suppose. Uh, and it's, it's uh, certainly the case that we just lost someone. Uh, I think. <laughs> well, well, now we can talk about, about it. Tonight. <laughs> um, do we want to? I do think we should. So, I mean, we can't... are we're pretty overdue for a break. We can take five, and then. Uh... We can, uh, I'm, we I'm can guessing this might be an Aaron's here on audio but not video thing. Oh, okay. His internet's dead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Break, time. Break time. Break time. Five minutes. All right. Minute. Cool. All okay. right. So, um, there, boys. Uh, uh, we've uh, we've kind of interrupted the flow of the scene, but let's say that you guys uh, you guys stay up into the long. Long into the night discussing uh, things perhaps better left undiscussed. Uh, give me the broad strokes of uh, of, of what have you, what each of you shares with the others. Uh, we can, as a, I guess, I'm more interested in the uh, two groups as they relate to each other. So I don't need to go through everybody in uh, the party proper. But Marcelin, what do you let on about yourself, and uh, and then everybody else, what do you guys let on to Mar- Marcelin? Oh, I mean. Marcelin is, in a lot of ways, or at least as far as you can tell, kind of an open book. He likes talking about himself and all the things that he's doing. And, you know, his he's very excited to be in the company of other uh, enthusiasts about uh, the occult and the ancient gods, because he feels that he can now speak about them without everyone kind of immediately becoming horrified or insane or, you know, mildly turned off or something like that. Um, but he also spends a lot of time talking about railroads, probably more time than like any of you want him to spend. All right. And, and so, so, uh, tell me, Nicola, what do you, what do you, what does your group let on, uh, about, uh, you know, your secrets? Well, it seems like Alex, or uh, sorry, Damon kind of spilled like all the beans pretty much. Okay. Or at least like the vast majority of them. I don't know. Maybe maybe you didn't like go into. Yeah, but maybe, what do you confirm? What do maybe you confirm? we? Uh, oh, I think uh, if there's anything that Nicola like chimes in on, it's probably you know the whole Knights of Malta thing, which she's still like pretty proud of. 
How does Marcelon feel about the Knights of Malta? Any reaction? Um, you know, it's it's fine. It's not like <laughs> <That's> cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's not something that Marcelin had ever been personally involved in, so it can't be like the coolest. But sure. you know, <laughs> knighthood sounds all right. I'm all right, pretty sure yeah. the French were there at one point, so like that's that means that it's a uh, one step up from some place that like only Italians had been or something like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so um, you all uh, awake the next morning with, uh, here with the the, you know, the sounds of, of seagulls in your ears. Um, as you uh, as you step out on the deck, you can see um, that uh, you know land is in sight um, and beyond. Like I said before, well, as we started the session. Um, the uh, the sites of, of the village, village of, of Patia is uh, are, are in front of you, and uh, it looks like it'll soon be time to uh, disembark. So, uh, do you guys have? Tell me what are your what are your plans? Or do you have any last minute business aboard the ship? Um, so I'd like to speak to Janet Winston Rogers and like sure say that maybe like. I'd like I say uh, we've never ever met anyone else that knows about Golgoroth. Um, okay, yeah, all right. I guess that's true. Yeah, go on. I was like, except like Golgoroth. If, I mean, that guy knew about. Does Golgoroth <laughs> even really know about Golgoroth? I don't know. I think it was clear that he did. He. Was... I can't. I can't even comprehend how much Golgoroth knows about Golgoroth. That's, so yeah, like, that's actually probably true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. non-Euclidean amount of information. Yes. So I say, this... I was like, we can't, we can't just let him leave. He's the only other person that, that, that knows this. I say, uh, Mr. Smoke, this outfit has run amok since the day that I... Uh, since the day that I hired you and your, like, five original companions, all of whom are, like, dead or insane or... It's a sore subject. You know, like, yeah, I mean... Listen, Gus is- Allen is alive. He's out there. Uh, I believe. In, in, some, in some time frame, he's alive. He's not but- yet dead. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you are slowly die. devoured over the course of an eternity, you'll never really be dead ever. Gus Allen is alive. Hashtag. At the end of time, he dies, but he's not really in existence now. It's anyway. It's complicated. Is it, or is it really <laughs> straightforward? No, it's probably complicated. Okay. So uh, anyway, Janet says, uh, "Mr. Smoke, I, I'm, uh, I'm appalled at your." Uh, your your lack of of uh, safeguarding for those that you meet and uh, those that you work with to to imply that we should just take this stranger on board uh, into my payroll and um, and into our confidence and potentially deal him great harm uh, is um, exactly what my father would have done and I think a good idea. Damon like stands there for a second and like looks at him and he says Your father <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. He's like that's right, he's the one that Oh my god started She like mess. smacks you. She's like this is the whole fucking point. Don't you remember four years ago slash like three months ago when we uh when I hired you and no, it's told been, you what this is all about. It's, it's been, been like it's been like a year, two years, or a year. Yeah, or, yeah, that's why I said what I said because I don't remember. How long. Um, Tim says your says your father was he tried to he's one of the ones that tried to stop it, and he looks over at a uh, at a uh, Marcelon and he says uh, perhaps perhaps you can talk to him. So we're just having this conversation in front of this guy. No, I mean, I no, 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 no. I said, I said, I pull you aside. I said, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so, what are you saying to Marcel? No, I'm telling you to talk. Oh, to, him. to talk to him. Ask I him say, to join us. I say, Mister Smoke, it, it is certainly my place to do so, uh, and and I will gladly take on that mantle. 
Um, but I but I want you to know that uh, that we will get to the bottom of this, and I'm relying on you. I'm not sure that I should, but I am. I'm relying on you. Uh, I haven't paid you to forget about my father in the last two years for nothing. And uh, and Janet like turns on her heel and and walks away from you to to see Marcelin. Sure. So uh, I assume Marcelin is. Uh... Standing at the edge of the deck, looking wistfully out at the sea, smoking a cigarette. That is, of course, correct. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what's going on. Uh, Janet Winston Rogers, like, comes striding across the deck, you know, like, kind of like lightly pushing people out of her way. Uh, and she, she comes up and, and uh, like, clears her throat. Behind behind Marceline and, and says, uh, "Monsieur, uh, oh crap, I don't, I don't, I don't have your last name. What do I mean? Bavino. Bavino. She says, uh, "Monsieur Bavino, um, I, I believe it, uh, it's important that we speak." Ah, my delicate wilting flower. What do you need? Um, I, I assume you say it in French, and Janet has very good aristocratic French, but this idiomatic French confuses her, and she thinks that you. She's not sure what you said, but she like. She's like, all right, sure. Um, she says, uh, it's come to my attention vis-a-vis the 12-hour conversation we all had last night that uh, you're heavily involved <laughs> in what's going on here. And uh, What's going on here? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I say that this has been going on uh, far too long and far too dangerously for me to mince words. Uh, we're on a mission here, and I think, I think we need your help. Ah, well, for you, ma belle, anything, of course. I, uh, I'm still not quite sure what you said, but I heard bell, and I know what that means, so I, like, blush slightly, and I say, um, I say, yes, well, uh, it, it sounds like you're on board. Um, of course, you'll be compensated for missing out on your, your railroad excavations, uh, should this take some time, but, uh, Compensation, Basically. please, do not speak of such menial things as money to me. I'm sure that my overseers are more than capable of dealing with the train tracks. They run straight, they turn to the side, it's fine. I said, but, but the whole thing about the timber and the different size of tires... Well, never mind. It's not important. Oh, did you want to hear more about exactly how the train track is going to turn to the left? Because you have to cut the tie just the right way for it to taper from one side to the other. Otherwise, it will not set correctly. And then you run ever the slightest chance of the train derailing, which I don't need to tell you as a fellow train enthusiast would be, how we say, disastrous. So, so Janet looks like briefly, <laughs> intensely fascinated. And then she like she gets like a look in her eyes and she says, no. My my father loved trains, but listen, ah, listen, what Mr. A good man. I said, listen, Monsieur Bevino, I I don't think we have time for this. Although maybe later, but but for now, what's important is that when we get off this damned boat, we as need the to boat find... falls into the dock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I say we need to find, and I say SS's name, like you know. Like the music swells and the camera closes in, and I'm like, "We need to find that man or woman, whoever it is." Um, and I, I invite you to to join us on our adventure. Well, I have nothing better to do, and uh, after all, you have invited me, so sure, let us do it. Let us dance. Polite Europeans. Uh, all right. I'm satisfied with that. All right, cool. So um, you guys gather your luggage, including, I assume, an ever, uh, you know, a burgeoning uh, sack of books, uh, and step out onto the, uh, in, on, onto the dock of, of, of Pattaya. Um, tell me, uh, who's taking the lead? What are you guys doing? You, you can see it's sort of, um, it's definitely a tropical area. Uh, it seems like most of the local uh, commerce is probably based on fishing. Um, although as the largest population center in, in, in some number of miles, uh, it also serves another, a, 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 a number of necessary other functions. Uh, there well, aren't many roads, but there are a few automobiles here. Uh, 
mostly though it's horses and um and other other you know janet says uh where we're going we won't need roads and then she uh she kind of like importantly steps off the boat and um you know uh indicates to damon smoke that he should carry the ever burgeoning gigantic sack full of uh full of books also i assume frank kearns piloted this boat across the gulf of siam for us yeah of course sure so he's so i i instruct him to take a nap okay he didn't he's hear you because he was asleep yeah <laughs> piloting over he's out for the count so what do you yeah what do, what do you guys intend to do here what's uh well, so what were all of uh, Janet's uh, clues that she had? So Janet knew that. Uh, what was it? It had something to do with the production of the other nectar, right? That like something about that led her to think that this SS person was out here and important. Isn't that isn't that what it was? I don't remember. You remember? So you have a, you have at least a couple of names. You have the name Savitri Sarakan, and you have the name right. Kokra Island, uh, which you know which is where we are, right? No, we're, we're in not the... on Kokra Island, but no, you we're you have come to understand it's nearby. Oh, I th- no the thing the thing that I knew was that the leader of the cult SS is here on Kokra, and that's where the cash has been going from Loman's house. That guy Daniel Loman, I think maybe the like. Patsy, mm-hmm. who we thought was like important, but then just turned out to be like a, a frightened old man who was not seduced by me at all uh, when I was Kitty Kennedy, um, has been like funneling all the money out there. So this is like the hub of the cult, maybe, and the production of, of the nectar. This is where the power sits. So if we want to know about that horrific fighting pit or whatever, we've got to go see SS here on Kokrook. Wait, so we are on Kokrook Island. Yeah, you're no, not on right Kokrok now. Island. We are in, oh, no, we are not. Yeah. No, the we are not. The village of Patia and uh, Kokrok well, like Island. Yeah, we are part of Kokrok. Okay, That's what we're talking about. So we should uh, inquire with the fishermen about trying to reach yeah. Kokrok Island. We, I like hail a water taxi, otherwise known <laughs> as we hire some random fisherman to take us to Kokrok. Okay, so you you want to? Um, I mean, there's plenty of people around that look like they could be fishermen. You can see there are people like getting boats ready to go out. Um, it's it's morning, but like you know, not really early morning. So uh, you just want to approach somebody. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Who who look who looks like they're commanding a fleet of like two whole fishing boats? <laughs> um. Yeah, you, you know, so I don't know if you can you find a fleet commander, but you find a guy with a with a boat that looks a little bit larger than some of the other people's. This is like a four person boat instead of like some of the, like one and two people boats you find around. Right now, who here speaks Thai? I'm Was quite it? certain that I do. I don't know whether it's written on my sheet, but given that I've been living here and working here for ten or fifteen years, I know how to speak it. I don't know that I will for you. Also, Jacob right. does. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I don't Jacob, know if you Jacob just... also knows how to speak it. Right. Okay. So maybe Jacob should take the lead in. Uh, I don't. I don't know that Marcelin either wants to or like knows all of our interests in no. starting these conversations. So maybe sure. Jacob should. Okay. Uh, well, Jacob will approach the the man associated with the four person boat and. Sure. Uh, so, so he, as he sees you approach, he um, he like seems to recognize at least your clothing, and he uh, he like genuflects. Um, you know, slightly incorrectly, like he does it the wrong way. I, all right. Well, well you know, I say, uh, what, you know, do a nice, in, you know, polite greeting. I don't know what time of day it is. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. You know, good morning. Uh, uh, is your boat for hire? He's, um, he looks around, he says, uh, sir, uh, for the right price, of course. Um, you uh, you'd you'd have to pay our, pay our you know what we'd make on a, on a fishing trip today, but uh, I can take you somewhere if you wish. Excellent. Uh, have you heard of a nearby island called Kokruk Island? Uh, so he looks at you warily and he says, "Um, I've heard of it. What's your interest?" 
Is this like every time we say the word co crook, there's like violin music that swells in the background? <laughs> My companions and I are researchers, and uh, we've heard some interesting stories about co crook Island and would like to get a closer look. Um, he shakes his head. He says, no, 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 you don't want to go there. Uh, all who go there never return. You needn't worry about us. We will pay you quite handsomely. Um, he, uh, he says, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't take you there. It's, uh, my wife would kill me. How well, about you for your double, life? You will double the wage that you are paid for a normal day of fishing. Yeah, and I so take out you, uh, dollars. So, yeah, I mean, I would say there's an opportunity for a spend here, if that's what you're, if you want. Uh, yeah, a bargain. Okay, yeah, sure, you want to spend a point of bargain? Yeah. So, um, he says, uh, he, uh, he looks around, he says, um, uh, you know, listen, uh, you can pay me, if you pay me four times our, our, our daily wage, uh, I can take you nearby the island, but, um, but I won't go ashore. Uh, and by the way, four, four days worth of fish in, in the, you know, rural Siam is like really not that expensive. Quite reasonable. I know. I figured, I figured JWR was going to pay for it anyway. So yeah. Yeah. We no, have it's, infinite, this, this we is have like infinite money. It's not a problem. Freaking expense. This is like yeah. probably. Yeah, Jan, Janet's like flashing cash, having understood from the flow of the conversation that they're talking about money. Um, he says, sure. um, we will I, I could I could take you nearby, but you'll uh, you'll need to swim to shore. No, you could bring some kind of canoes with you, something because I don't want to swim. We're not we're not hiring this guy to take us like part way. I'm with Mabel. Jacob um, will say. Surely, if we pay you five times the wage, oh you would take us to shore. Like six dollars, um, Nick. Don't worry. About it. No, I know, I know, I know that. I just, I this, this like lowly fisherman drives a hard bargain. No, he's yeah, a fleet commander. God damn it! <laughs> you wanted, <laughs> you wanted, the fleet wanted commander. Commander. You wanted a man of substance. <laughs> he also he honestly does not, not want to go there. This no, I know he honestly does not want to go there. taking people to Krokok Island for nothing. He, he obviously does not honestly does not want to go there. That's why I'm wondering if it's if it's better to just like hire boats. Than why boats. don't we pay him four times the amount, and then when we get close to the island, he can swim back here, and we yeah. will take the boat to the island. Exactly. All right. So um, yeah, he'll he'll like take you to shore, but he's going to leave. He's not going to come back to pick you up. Can can we not just hire a boat from this guy? My you man, it's you just fine. Take his boat? As soon as we get to the island, we will kill him and keep the boat. I mean, you Holy can offer to buy his boat, maybe. Let's, let's ask no, about I, the boat. No, I like what the Frenchman said, so... Okay. It does not help to... I assume it this does guy doesn't speak French, so he didn't hear us just plot to murder him, so, like, it's fine. <laughs> everyone, everyone can understand murder in French. <laughs> what? Um, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, with your bargain, with your bargain spend, you can certainly buy the boat. Um, it would be uh, an expense, but like absolutely nothing out of what you've spent uh, in some other places around the world. Uh, how Take are we planning to get to the island without um, some kind of navigator or map? How far just... away is it? Uh. Uh, Even if we can ask we this can, guy for yeah, directions. Can have him draw us a, a map of the of the island's location. Um, he says, uh, "Sure, very well. Uh, are any of you a navigator? We have a pilot. Do you know how to? You know to Does Nicola know how to? Do you know how to fly a boat? No, that that guy was eaten by a space god from beyond time and space. <laughs> Wait, you've met Gorgoth? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, Nicola, no. No. It doesn't know anything about that. Well, you know what? Frank Kearns actually, as it turns out, is an accomplished sailor. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> Before he got um, tired of boats and switched to airplanes. <laughs> well, it turns out that he dreams about boats while he's flying. 
right. <laughs> he really wants um, an airship. Sure. So you can, you, Frank Kearns can can um, can try to take you if you know approximately where it is. Um, you guys can head there if you want. Uh, there's also, you know, obviously, uh, yeah. So yeah, you you think you have passage secured. Uh, you can buy this guy's boat, uh, and um, Frank Kearns can can sail you. You guys, All right, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. You guys want to do anything else here, or are you want to go straight away? Uh, I mean, we can. Do you want to ask around about about this lady? We we could do the classic, like go into the pub and just be like, so, uh, Cook Island, there? and see how people react. Like, how's your neck? Yeah, I've already yeah. bought the boat, so we don't need to be in a rush, I suppose. Yeah. I'm Nehana Wash. Uh, yeah, so is, is what, what's like... I mean, you said it's a decent population, right? So I don't know if there's like an actual like saloon, but maybe there's like the place that the guys all go to drink after they fish all day long. Well, there is a restaurant, a bar and restaurant called Blue Pataya. Pataya. Okay, let's go there. Do we need reservations? Because uh, Janet only likes going places that you need reservations. Uh, you definitely do not need reservations here. All right, she'll allow it. Okay. Okay, so you um, you enter, uh, you know, an establishment. Uh, to your to your standards, it's pretty low. Um, there appear to be some fishermen um, having drinks or or, or various foods. Um, it smells. Um, exotic and and uh, as you walk in the door, uh, you can see uh, there's there's like you know some kind of cook slash uh, uh, food food server uh, standing behind a counter um, who like sort of waves to you as you as you enter. One cheeseburger, please. Yeah, I, I like go and sit at the cleanest table and like uh, wait for service. He sits sure. at the, the the table. Yeah. So um, uh, after after a few moments, um, a, a young a young girl comes up to you and says in in Thai, like uh, you know, like how can I how can I help you? Yeah. I I ask um, Jacob to to have her bring like you know whatever their whatever like their finest meal is. <laughs> bring, me, bring me your finest meal. Oh, yeah. whatever, whatever, Jacob, like, whatever that might be. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, whatever they're really good at. I say, like, takes. you know, have them, have them. Jacob, bring some. Jacob tells the the girl to bring her all of her bacon and eggs. Okay. All. I'm afraid you misunderstood me. All right. Um. So she uh she disappears for a little bit. Um. Uh. What do you guys do? You guys want to talk to anybody? Like, what what what's the, what's the uh, what's the goal here? What do you what are you guys angling at? I mean, I'm angling a little bit. Uh, uh, co truck a couple times. See yeah. what it looks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want to ask about about co truck Or just talk about it loudly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not sure. to directly ask about it. I'm just going to be like, so, Jacob, how do you feel about the fact that we're about to go to co crook in an hour? Right. And maybe um, talk to that lady. <laughs> Whatever. So a guy at the next table says, um, you know, like he like he, he spits some kind of some insult at the ground and he says, um, you're an idiot for going there. Jacob well, turns to the man and uh, says, have you been there before? He says, uh, no, but uh, my uh, my cousin's best friend uh, ventured out there. And where did he go? They say um, they say his body washed up on shore, mutilated. You never mutilated went to the how? So why did he venture to the truck? What? Um, he says um, he uh, he heard that there was a uh, the family that used to live there um, that that their house was abandoned. He thought he could loot. Do most of the villagers here? Not like Kokrok Island. You know, he um, he says, of course not. It's uh, most of them think it a cursed place, haunted. Is it? Um, 
Yeah, he, you know, he he tilts his head from side to side. He says, uh, probably. Say, so how was your uh, cousin mutilated? Cousin's best friend. Best friend. Former um, soon to be. He, he, he was covered in lacerations from head to toe, but um, uh, there was no blood. I mean, if he washed up on shore, the blood probably washed away. So, I mean, yeah, so you're saying he was hit by a propeller and then yeah. bled out in the water and washed uh, up on shore. So, like, you know, as you cast dispersion as, as his story, he says, no, 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 of course. It was a, it was a ghastly thing. Listen, uh, it, it was terrible. It was terrible. My cousin saw it himself. So you did not even see this yourself? Yeah, uh, you know. Uh, no. Is your... Is your cousin so, is your cousin available? May we talk to him? Can we talk to someone useful? Is what we're saying. If you could just you know leave and go get someone good. So I um, I, I, I step in on this guy's behalf and I attempt to use uh I, I want to use a point of flattery here, Kevin. I say surely this honest man you know knows what he's talking about. Um, so, so no point no point required. Um, he kind of um, he kind of reacts like a little bit sheepishly. He says um. Listen, listen, it's it's true, it's true, of course. I I, I, I swear to you. Um I, he, he would he would tell the story himself, but I'm I, I think maybe he would he would be too too shocked. Perhaps perhaps it would upset him. Or maybe your cousin's a liar. So maybe uh, maybe we could maybe we could speak to him. Um we really want to go, and if you say it's a dangerous, you know, to go, as, uh, if it is as dangerous to go as you're saying, then maybe perhaps your cousin can convince us out of going. But... He says, uh, yes, that's, that's very wise, but I, I, I wouldn't want to upset him. Um, you know, his, his friend just died. Uh, his, it, it you don't even have a cousin, do you? This just happened? Um, he, he nods. He says, yes, uh, just last month. Ah. Not even if we pay your cousin the same six dollars that we just paid a fisherman for his best boat. Just throwing that giant money around. Yeah. So You're he ruin looks the economy um, on this. Village. He looks. He looks a bit anxious at the, at this line of questioning. Especially because half of us are not speaking Thai, and he's probably really confused. Uh, anyway, uh, what are we hoping to get out of this? We have a boat. We have a destination. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't know. I thought maybe if there was some some better information about like why people don't like Kokrook or like what to avoid there, that would help. But it doesn't seem like it's going to be that easy to get. Let's avoid the laceration machine. I have yeah. marked one down. No laceration machine. Points of points of investigation. Once we get there, something to to go on once we land. I think. So, so I can't. I can't lie, uh, at a character w without just making stuff up unfairly. I don't have points yet to spend on anything, but it certainly seems like maybe this guy could be persuaded in certain ways to like get more information out of this scene. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's up to you guys. If if you don't think it's worth a spend, then you don't have to. Out to the crowd. Um, I mean, uh, what about what about a point of like a. Uh, you know, assess honesty. I gave him the benefit of doubt, saying he's an honest man. But does he do? The, what about his body language? His, you know, everything else. Sure. That... I'll, I'll take a point of assess honesty. That's fine. Okay. So, um, you could tell that he is actually uh, telling the truth, as it were. Um, you you question him for a few more minutes, um, and he seems to um, he seems to respond by your by your you know your defense of him and your um, you know, uh, uh, th that, that you seem to believe him. Um, and he finally comes down. He says, uh, I, I can arrange up with a meeting with my cousin, but um, I think he'll probably only come out uh, lit at night. He's, uh, he's been in hiding for some time. Yeah, you see, he's very upset by the death of his, by the death of his friend. Um, but um, I think you'll have trouble getting to Cook Crook, as you, as you say. Uh, none of the local boats have been going near it. Uh, that's not a problem for us, but it could be worth it to talk to his cousin. What what stopped the boats from going near it? I mean, this 
besides this dude dying like a month ago? Was this it? Was that it? Um, is there yeah, more? Um, he kind of shrugs. He says, uh, there have always been stories about that place. But um, recently, fishermen who, who went near there have said to have, 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 said to have gone missing. Um, people disappearing in the night, strange noises. Hmm. How, how yeah. far is it from, from here? It's like 10 miles. Or is it a thousand? <laughs> a thousand and ten? How long were we on that boat? <laughs> About 17 years as the crow <laughs> flies in 1992. <laughs> it feels like it's been since like 2015. That's, that's what it feels like. Um, like I said, uh, J- Janet Janet's always in favor of like kind of gathering information and planning stuff out not so much the uh let's just go in thing so she's she's pretty happy to meet with the cousin but um she's not exactly going to edict it out because she can't row this boat alone i think we should meet with the cousin and see what he has definitely all right so um in the interest of time since we're coming up the end here um i will say um he arranges for a meeting um later that night um after nightfall uh, somewhere out in like a slightly more re- remote part of town. Um, it's maybe a little shady, but uh, you guys are like, you know, what, five people? And uh, you probably have guns, so you're not too worried. We have, we um, have like three guns per person still. <laughs> Somehow. Um, so uh, so you meet with a man who seems, um, he seems very anxious. Um, what do you want to ask him about? Go crook. Um, he says, um, he's, he's, uh, he says, I, I, I've, I've been nearby. I've, I've seen the Island. Um, there's a, it's, it's, it's a rocky place, um, with, uh, with, with a, a dense jungle on, on top, um, maybe a half mile long. Uh, it doesn't have any villages or settlement except for, um, a large mansion in the center of the Island and a, uh, uh, a, a decaying dock near, near the edge. Um, so you can see ever... the mansion from the water? He says, uh, yes, 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 you can. Um, I've heard it, it used to be the home of someone quite wealthy, but um, that has been abandoned. Has he ever seen anybody docked at the crumbling dock? Um, he, he says, uh, not that he remembers. And what? how did he hear that it was abandoned? Mansion? He kind of shrugs. Was he with his friend the night that his friend went there? Um, he says no, but but he found his body as it uh, as it washed ashore. So you let your best friend go to Crow Crook alone, huh? <laughs> friends don't let friends sail to Crow Crook alone. He um he like turns to uh, Marseille and and. Um, and Jacob, as as Janet starts talking, and he's like, oh, "What what's you saying?" Nothing of import. Uh, you know how it is with women. <laughs> okay. Anything else you want? I guess want to ask him about. What is the best? Well, I guess the dock is probably the best place to dock on the island. So um, I'll say this: <laughs> as as you mentioned, his friend, um, he he kind of shudders, and um, and his face goes white. Do we, we have any, uh, anybody got any, like, I can reassurance do or yeah. psychoanalysis? I or... was going to say, I got reassurance. I could put a spend on that. Okay, sure. What do, you, what do you say to him to reassure him? Um, that we're going to try to prevent anyone from dying, right, Kokrook again. Mm-hmm. That... Any information he can give us about the island will help us make sure nobody suffers like his friend did. Um, okay, so um, he um, he looks up at you and he says, um, "It it was it was horrible. He was he was dead, bloated even, but still the thing. It rasped and moaned, even what as thing? we." Body, I think. It, it let out a cry. Quick, ask him what the hell he's talking about. What? Can you please explain what uh, the body was still 
breathing. He says, um, on his side, a, a deep gash with, with teeth about it had gnawed off what it could reach of his arm. And, and even, even as he, even as we burned the body on the beach, it, it's, it let out a scream. Jacob kind of pales when he when he hears about the the mouth on the body as it makes him think of his daughter. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think uh, that's a good point, Dave. Um, I, and, I, and we didn't do this before, but uh, I think you probably should make a stability uh, stability check, if not for this, um, if for the, uh, the the experiences you had with your daughter when she tried sure. to kill him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was one of the the joys of of childbirth was it oh, not or, um how does that go again uh, so roll a d6 you can add as many stability as you want but uh mm-hmm. and you will lose the stability if you go under and you I'm lose any that you obviously spend right and you could potentially lose sanity probably not for this but for other stability checks Ooh. okay so you're going to lose uh two stability Okay, including in to the one you spent. Yes. In addition. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. So you can see, you can see Jacob shudder, um, and um, you know, his 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 face goes ashen. Um, anything else you guys want to talk to this guy about? Could he uh, provide me the name of someone in the area who sells uh, lumber? <laughs> I mean, I guess just before we end, we might as well ask him if he knows who SS is. Yeah. We didn't ask anybody else. Like, is that name? Like, he thinks nobody lives in the mansion. But what if we say the name SS to him? Also, Kevin, sorry, then I was going to remember her name. Oh, it's a uh, Sirikan. Uh, uh, Shreveport Sirikan. Um. So, as you mentioned the name to him, he um he he seems to jog his memory. He says Sirikan. Yes. Um. That's the family that used to own the island, I believe. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Dum, dum, dum. Music swells fade to All right. So um, I, uh, I, I think you guys have, have pretty much ended the scene. Uh, that, that there's not much more to, to ring out of this particular, um, you know, stone. Um, Best um, fish restaurant in... Yeah. So... Okay. Um, is there anything else you guys want to do in uh, Pattaya before you depart? Or I will, of course, set my uh, affairs in order. <laughs> Fair enough. Is that, I mean, uh, securing a supply for timber. And yeah. talking to my underlings about what need to be done while I'm gone. Fair enough. Or that's what I tell everyone else I'm doing. Uh, you probably just go and smoke on the dock looking wistfully out at the sea. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe with a glass of wine. Uh, it is yes. usually pretty academic, but I don't know if there are any supplies people think we might as well take with us. Like, I don't, I don't know if we're gonna have to like. So we can, we can use preparedness for that. Um, you, we, we can say, Janet, that you, uh, you go to the store and and get some supplies, and then yeah, yeah. If, if whatever it's you need, we can, uh, we can use pre- preparedness points for. Sure. Okay. All right. Cool. So we will end it there for this week. As you guys uh, board your uh, your your purchased fishing vessel uh, vessel on the on the way to the Kokrak Island. Um, and uh, one step closer, perhaps, to finding the uh, the answers you seek that are there. Okay. Um, well, thanks, guys, for playing. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, if you're watching us on Twitch TV, come check out our YouTube channel. If you're watching us on YouTube, come check us out every Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern as we stream live on Twitch TV. Um, this has been uh, Eternal Lies, Gulf of Siam, and... Uh, This has been Live from Beyond, so thanks everybody for watching, and have a good night.